We're continuing on with being known, and this Devo today is called The Thoughts. And the part of Psalm 139 that we're reading today is, How precious to me are your thoughts, O God, how vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I am awake, I am still with you. So why would God make it a point to let us know that the amount of thoughts He has toward us is more than the amount of grains of sand? So He must have millions and billions of thoughts about us. And what does that number mean? So to understand that, we need to look at the first part of the passage again. We read that His thoughts toward us are precious. That's one of the concepts of being known that we must grasp and hold close. There was a mother in Genesis that says when she has given birth to her child that it, he's a precious gift. So God too sees us as precious gifts and treasured. All throughout the Bible there are references to precious stones and what makes a stone precious is its uniqueness, its rareness, thus giving its value. Proverbs 3 says wisdom is precious and nothing compares, so nothing compares to God's precious thoughts about us. Isaiah 28 calls Jesus the precious cornerstone set apart for a specific purpose, rare and treasured. And Lamentations 4 says we are the work of the potter's hand, which makes us precious children. And in 1 Peter 1, the blood of Christ is called precious because it's without blemish or defect. I personally don't love to use the word precious. Maybe it's because it's associated with country talk. I don't know, or it seems fake when doting socialites say something so precious, maybe referring to their dog. But in this word, the first part of the passage is necessary to grasp and hold and realize that all of God's thoughts toward us are precious. They're treasured, unique, valuable, and nothing compares to them. They're purposeful, rare, the work of His hands, without blemish or defect, so that then when we read how many of those thoughts are toward us, we see how overwhelmingly wonderful it is that He has so many thoughts about us, as many as the grains of sand. In other words, there's an endless supply of God's precious thoughts toward us. We recently went on vacation and our son texted us that we were near the Little League World Series and he thought it was cool and urged us to go to a game. I don't know if I had seen that before, but we had planned our trip and had not even thought about going because we didn't realize we were near. But because my son thought it was cool, we wanted to check it out and we went and all sorts of God winks occurred getting us there and it was so fun. And you know what? It made us happy that our son t thought to tell us and it made us happy to go check it out and we ended up loving it. It was a highlight of our trip. I even teared up afterwards when I thought about how God enjoys seeing and hearing and experiencing things with us that we think are cool. He enjoys hanging out with us, going with us, and all of his thoughts toward us are precious and vast. Lots of our thoughts that we have are directly from him because it's his good pleasure to bless his children. If my son thought that game would be fun, then I we, his parents, wanted to go see. We wanted to please our son. But in doing so, we had a blast. God plants his thoughts in us. He doesn't just think them and not share them. And that, too, is vast in number and amazing and precious. And then he wants to be where we are, enter into our thoughts and minds, and go with us and enjoy life. The last part of this passage says, When I am awake, I'm still with you. Well, where else would the writer be? I'm not sure why he included these words, but I'm imagining that David one day felt so known by God and was blown away by all God's good thoughts toward him. He realized how precious he was that he belonged to God, and he couldn't even comprehend how many good thoughts God had toward him except to compare them to the grains of sand, innumerable. And then the next morning he was like, yes, he's not only thinking about me when I'm asleep, and singing songs over me and all the good things. He hasn't left my side all night, even in the darkest hours of the morning when all light was gone. He woke up and he was like, even after all I've done in the darkest times of my life, here I sit wrapped in the precious thoughts of God. I'm still here with him. He hasn't pushed me away or discarded me or turned his face from me. Instead, he's pouring out precious thoughts because I'm rare, unique, treasured, and part of his creation of his own hands. I'm right here in His presence at first morning's light. I'm already starting to feel known, and it feels pretty darn good, and I'm not sure I'm going to start calling people precious. But now that I know how precious His thoughts are toward me and how numerous, I'm happy to revisit this word and relish the sound of it as He speaks it into my ear. Precious, vast, present, and known.